in the following scene, you are only seeing one character. Let's head back towards the beginning, though. In the Chronicles of Light, it is revealed that Xenos, even as a child, was gifted in swordsmanship due to the teachings of a master. He would then kill this master using an ethereal technique. He used a crystal to force his Garlean body to produce aether, a feat normally impossible to do. This began his long life of boredom, waiting for the hunt to begin. While this is behind a paywall normally, it isn't required to know it, but I felt like it would be good to include to add some context. So let's fast forward to 2.1 and 2.2, where we are directly told what the Echo actually is. Elidibus makes himself known to Minfilia. He reveals much to us. La Habrea is alive, he is a mediator rather than a fighter, and more directly, the Echo she wields and the one that we wield, is incomplete. And if we had the complete Echo, we would see the true embodiment of the Ashians, rather than the humanoid forms we see them as. Additionally, we might not see a reason to be against the Ashians, a bold claim given what they're trying to do. In 2.2, we see this in action. They went beyond just teaching this Sahagan how to summon a primal, but how to use the Echo, how to become an Ashian. The true power of the Echo is that of the Ashians and their ethereal consciousness and body snatching technique. We have been told in no certain terms that the Echo contains much greater power than we wield. One Yusail makes to become Lady Shiva, or a primal encapsulation of her when she steps into the picture. Fast forward all the way to Stormblood, Xenos comes in as a monster of unparalleled strength. He is able to beat us handily, and that is even before the kidnapping of Kryle and the creation of the first resonant, for Dola. I consider her the beta test. Her resonant powers are even more unstable than ours, giving her constant echo headaches, like the ones we receive when seeing visions of the past. But she does have those echo visions and the same immunity to primal influence. While fighting to infiltrate the Alamegan Quarter, Xenos has his own procedure done. The full power of the Resonant is bestowed upon him. So strong a power, he towers over the icons. Fordola's comments being proven more accurate than she could have ever known as he brushes off Shinryu's attempt to temper you both, then taking complete control of the massive beast. Our Echo certainly can't do that, but Xenos sure knows that if we mastered the Echo, it could have been us to control Shinryu, or any other primal. Xenos is that of an Ashian, so it should come as absolute zero surprise when his suicide doesn't really work. The only way to destroy him now is with that of a blast of pure Aether like any other Ashian. Fast forward to Shadowbringers when Xenos makes it back to Garlemald. He makes swift work of all beings in his way to the throne room, where he assassinates the Emperor. Elidibus even fears Xenos, fleeing from the puppeted corpse of Xenos, and moves over to fighting us on the first. 
even the last Unsundered is afraid of what Xenos has become. A patch later, we find Xenos walking around the final days of Amarok, the world burning around him. He wakes up to comment that he has had this dream since he was a boy. Since before he first used that crystal to kill his teacher? Perhaps, as Fan Daniel remarks that Emmett Selk may have had a hand in this, since as we learn, the star showers reminiscent of the final days are what caused the awakening of the Echo. Perhaps Emmett implanted these dreams into Xenos, awakening latent powers due to his identity. Maybe he did more than just that. Perhaps the crystal Xenos used to kill his master was one of darkness. Whatever it was, Emmett likely had a hand in what Xenos has become, in addition to what he already was. That is to lead to where we began, back to the moment he and Fan Daniel meet, there being only one person in this scene. When Xenos turns to Fan Daniel, he activates his resident eyes and notes, of all things, the color of Fan Daniel's soul. One of the important things that we learned in Shadowbringers is that all beings have a hue to their soul, one that, even ages past, will remain consistent across the same people. The ancient known as Azem, the one who is friend to Emmett Selk, the one who left the Convocation in defiance of the Zodiac Plan, is our identity. And so that Xenos would know the hue of Fan Daniel's soul, we have only a few options. He's had the ability of the Ashians not for very long. For Dola, Xenos has killed subordinates for lesser failures than the one she had. And yet not only did she live, she was granted the Resonant. Granted, this was more as a test subject, but anyone could have been a test subject. He saw something within her, her fighting spirit perhaps, to have him use her as the first Resonant. After being defeated in Castro Mabanya, she retreats to the facility used to create the Resonant, as the last barrier to rescue Kryle. By the time she arrives, Xenos will have certainly have become a Resonant himself. Her post-defeat comments sure back this idea. He'll have at least seen her soul hue, but I doubt she shares a hue with Fan Daniel. Aelis Mal Asina, the doctor who granted Xenos the Resonant, would be the first person he sees upon waking up, and the first person to activate the powers in front of. These powers are only thanks to Aelis and his studies. He's even our second boss in Alamigo. He's able to entirely remove our souls from our bodies, at least according to his voice lines that it's the soul. So he knows much, maybe even more about the hue of the soul than most. Personally, I don't think he'd be sharing any hues, though Fan Daniel is quite intelligent. Us, Azem. Unless this Fan Daniel character is not actually Fan Daniel, but a shard of Azem pretending to be Fan Daniel? Unlikely the case. Not only would that mean Emmett, Elidibus, or La Habrea thought it a good idea to raise a shard of Azem up to the convocation, Xenos would have been much more excited to see Fan Daniel. Emperor Varus. Xenos cared much for his father. As much as enough to kill him for nearly killing us with Black Rose. He did use the Resident Eye right before killing Varys, but this wouldn't make sense to me either. Why wouldn't Emperor Solus just tell Varys the truth and turn them into another Ashian? If whatever has been done to Xenos worked, surely the same could be repeated on Varys? Gaius and Estinian, definitely not, but flies to Xenos as he swats them away. Though I do have a separate theory I'll go over in a moment, that one or both of them, and the rest of the Scions, are members of the Convocation of Fourteen. But let's go back to Xenos, our final candidate. There is only one person in this scene. One shard of the seat of Fan Daniel, and eight shards, seven times rejoined. 
of the seat of Fan Daniel. Who else could it be besides one of these candidates? Someone Zeno saw on his way back to Garlemald after his death? People he could kill with one swipe? Why would he take notice of the hue of their soul? And then there's my theory with the Endwalker poster, one shared by other people as I've talked to people about theories and they also have the same theory. There are 11 characters in this poster. Tataru, Orange, Ustola, Alphino, Istinian, the Warrior of Light, Xenos, Alize, Graha, Thancred, and Hydaelyn. Or Vena, if you prefer like I do. Given Hydaelyn whisked Minfilia away in a realm reborn to become the Oracle of Light, and then would head to the first to become many Minfilias through the ages, reborn again and again, just like ancients being reborn with the same soul, and Vena seems to remind a lot of people of how Minfilia looks, Vena could be a stand-in for Minfilia, the 11th and final member of the 11 members of the convocation who were sundered. That would make it much more reasonable for Elidibus to believe that if Minfilia had the true Echo, she would join the Ashians. She is the source form of one of the Convocation. 14 out of 14 Convocation members accounted for. The Unsundered Three, slain by our hand, and well, the hand of King Thoradin, and the remaining 11, Scions and Sinners, now once more fighting against the end. Remember the Ancients, remember Emmet Selk, and remember the Convocation's fight against the final days. The chaos spreads, and the star seems doomed to unravel. And yet, here are those who stand in defiance of that fate. Thank you all for watching, and an extra special thanks to all my patrons on Patreon, and an extra extra special thanks to Amen Al Khatib, Ben Begurn, Benjamin Han, Sadia Diosasan, Crikey mate, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Kyle Steinhauser, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Paxton Lancaster, Ronald J. Carney, Scott Stanley, T Rogue, Ticklefinger, and Valor LLC. Once again, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time, and I'll see you all for a lot of time in Endwalker. Right, the power of Anandid Hogsley waste to your enemies.